The biggest evening of the year for Brisker Formula 2 stock car racing sees almost 100 cars gather on the East Coast at Skegness Raceway for the 2021 Championship of the World. Drivers are here from England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, the Netherlands and Belgium to battle for the gold roof currently held by Scotland's Gordon Moody. He'll be starting the world final from the back of the grid. So will we see a new winner here at Skegness tonight? Two heats for non-qualifiers, first of all, followed by the main race in part one of our programme. Highlights from the consolations in part two, followed by the meeting final for the Alan Benson Trophy and then a pair of Grand Nationals necessary from the massive entry of Brisker F2s we have got here. The first world final held since 2019. Ready for heat set number one then, 33 cars out there for this one. Lined up in their grades, about to get underway in the first race of this world final meeting before a huge crowd here at the Skegness Raceway. Heat one on gets underway, Jamie Ward, Scott and Will Adams, 881 and 544. The early pace setters are ready, bumpers starting to go in further back. Huge grids in every race here on World Final Nights 2021. Already getting uh, set wide there. Scotsman Liam Rennie in car number three. Bumpers going in among the yellow and blue tops. Four and five abreast. And we've got a pile up there. Coming off turn two. Jack Prosser was in there in 844. Uh, I saw 390 in there too. Jessica Smith. Will Adams leads through the carnage in 544. Cars all over turn two. I imagine that will be the first uh, caution flag of the evening. Emma Mellis is in there. Neil Hooper, 676, among others. No caution flag at the moment as the bumpers go in there. The 194 gets uh, fired in there. Plenty of early chaos now. The caution flag does come out with four or five cars stranded on uh, turn two there. There's too many cars into too small a space we uh, see there as they come off turn two. A couple of cars tangled, then three or four piling in behind. Emma Mellis in there, Neil Hooper, Jack Prosser, Jessica Smith. Good to see plenty of ladies racing here tonight. It's Will Adams who leads. Andy Bentley is in second place. Then we've got um, Ayrton Mills, number five. And the Dalfa cars aren't even going to reach the green flag on the restart. About uh, half a dozen cars gone off there on turn four already. Ayrton Mills comes through into second in car number five. Three wide there off the turn. The 194 involved again. He's been uh, pushed from pillar to post in this one already. Some of the higher graders further back, 315. That's uh, Justin Fisher, one of the West Countrymen. 512 in there is uh, Jason Blacklock. Angle there on the outside again. So plenty of cars involved early doors in this uh, first heat. This is just the non qualifiers for the world final. Bumper goes in there, and Will Adams gets fired into a pile up on turn four. So Ayrton Mills takes the lead away in uh, spectacular fashion there. He's picked up the leader and fired him into the back of a stationary car there on the second, on the fourth turn. The yellow flags come out again. Well, certainly an incident-packed uh, first race, to say the least. Tangle there, involving about three or four cars. David Shearing facing backwards, Jamie Jones and several more. Tristan Claydon went in, uh, Ben Bates, plenty more. Way with this uh, heat number one then with Ayrton Mills, number five, your race leader. Liam Rennie fighting back, he got uh, fired wide early on. 2-3-9 getting taken wide there as well, one of the white graders. So many cars involved here, nearly a hundred cars here tonight for the biggest night of the year for Brisker F2. Shearing in 564 under fire from uh, number 17. That's Paul Reed from Scotland. Still Mills that leads. Up in the second now is Dan Fallows, number 581, ahead of Andy Bentley, the ex Rebels racer in 939. Then uh, we've got one of the Seneschal family, 376, that's Darren Seneschal. He's just been taken by 315 of Justin Fisher. Let's see if he can catch our leaders here. Josh Weir on the back of Liam Rennie. This is a little further back down the top 10. Andy Bentley is taken by Fisher. He's up into third place. Seneschal trying to come through as well, number 376. We've got this battle behind Josh Weir. Matt Stoneman in there as well, the man from Devon in 127. Really has been an incredibly busy season here at uh, the Skegness Raceway. Rob 
speak and his promotional team doing a sterling job running meetings throughout summer 2021. Almost three wide there off the turn coming through on the inside is Matt Stoneman. Which we are in the middle, Andy Bentley on the outside. Still Ayrton Mills up front ahead of Dan Fallows. They've broken away from Justin Fisher in third place in the 3-1-5. into the closing stage now and a tangle and over there goes the uh, 512 I think that was of Jason Blacklock the leader avoids him we've got a car upside down on turn one it is Blacklock number 512 a spectacular incident there I didn't quite see who he tangled up with he rode over the wheels of another car and over he went so Jason Blacklock 512 upside down there try and see again uh, what happened Tangled up road over the wheels of Jamie Jones, 915, and straight over. Spectacular accident there, down into Turn 1. The car coming to rest on its roof. The leader's doing well to uh, avoid him there. So, late drama here. It's going to be a sprint for the line. Can Ayrton Mills hang on? He's got Dan Fallows behind him, then Justin Fisher and Matt Stoneman. A slightly messy restart there. A few cars uh, going slightly before the drop of the green there. Matt Stoneman comes through in a third. Justin Fisher is going to be taken out and wallop straight in goes Liam Rennie. That's Fisher gone from third place. The leader is still Ayrton Mills just ahead of Dan Fallows. Matt Stoneman is up to third. Now Fallows in 5-8-1 lining up the number five car for a last bend attack here he's surely going to get the bumper in here he goes in goes the bumper into turn three up the inside so it's going to be a drag race to the line between the two of them fallows just gets there on the line well, what a cracker that was and that's just the first warm-up heat of this world final meeting superb dan fallows snatches the win on the finish line from ayrton mills who led most of the way Dan Fallows, the winner from Ayrton Mills by 0 0.09 of a second. Matt Stoneman in third place. It was Mark Gibbs who came through for fourth ahead of Josh Weir. Ollie Steeles, the blue grader, in sixth ahead of Darren Seneschal. Then David Shearing, Liam Rennie and Tristan Claydon completing the top ten. Heat one winner, 581, Dan Fallows. Not the race you would have wanted to be in, but a win's a win, eh? Yeah, um, we'd have loved to be in the world final, obviously, but the luck didn't seem to go our way on Thursday night in the, in the semi-consolation, so... We had, we had, I felt we got the pace to be to be in there and be and be quick enough to challenge for it, but we didn't finish. We got sort of took out at the beginning. So he certainly had a lively heat here as well, didn't you? I mean, there was everything going on in that number five. Looked to have got away. Then we had the rollover, and that gave you your chance. Yeah, well, he was he was quick. To be fair, he was as fast as me. Um, and then the, the wave yellow sort of bunched us up again. And I knew there was only a couple of laps left, so I thought I got to have a go last corner, and that's when, that's when it happened. So yeah. Yeah, it was a nice last bend lunge and you got him just on the line, which is like nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's nice when it pays off. Like, it doesn't always pay off like that, but it is nice when that pays off. Um, yeah, just enough to shift him out of the way and come through. So, yeah, good. And of course, you now get a, a different view of the world final, but no damage in it. One that won't cost us as much money, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it'll be good to watch. It'll certainly be you know, a good race to watch. A um, lot of top lads in it, so it'll be, it'll be lively. It'll be very good. And then, of course, you've got the meeting final later on to go for. Yeah, we'll have a go at that always, always. You've got to try and win or break it trying. So. Exactly. Well, yeah. best of luck. Thank you. Cheers. On to heat at number two, then. Another 16 laps coming your way. Another a busy grid of nearly 30 cars out there for Bristol F2 heat number two. We get underway and uh, some drivers not going to reach the uh, start line. The yellow grade is already tangling up there. So that first turn, it's Dale Seneschal Jr. who leads with a tangle there between the 738 of Joe Woods and uh, Chris Masters in 177, stuck together there on the first turn. Is that going to lead to another yellow flag? There's another car off there on turn four, one of the yellow tops. We'll try and identify that in a moment. Three packets around the outside of the tangled cars there. Your early leader is Dale Seneschal Jr., number 379. And the yellow flags now do come out. For some reason, everybody chooses to stop at the start-finish line. It was Seneschal who led off ahead of uh, Rebecca Smith in 9-3-1. Good to see her in there, sister of uh, Jessica. That's the first time two sisters have raced together in Brisk Rev 2, but the tangle between Masters and Woods taking them out of the action. There is Rebecca Smith, 9-3-1, 5-9-7 in uh, second place. That's one of the Clough family. We get back underway, that's Barry Clough up there in second place. 
Langley, then John Hadfield coming through past uh, Rebecca Smith, the uh, 142 car. John Hadfield, the ex-Ginetta sports car racer on the circuits. 297 dropping back down the order, Paul Bailey. So Tim competing this weekend as well. There's the leaders, Seneschal from Hadfield. Barry Clo goes down to third place in the 597 as Hadfield moves to the inside and takes the lead through turns three and four. Higher graders already starting to come through. There's Harley Burns, 992, getting the bumper in. Only in his teens is Harley, made his debut in Brisker F2, having moved up from national mini stocks last season. Very quick racer indeed, he's already held red top in his first season in the sport, one of the quickest novices last year. To push and shove, there's Joe Marquand, number 689. Grandfather Johnny Marquand, the next world champion. Makes his way through with another West Countryman on his tail there, 667, that's Tommy Farrell. Push and shove, and somebody getting spun out and wallop straight in we go there. It's one of the blue graders, couldn't quite see who it was. 903, Ben Spence gets fired in, and so does uh, Rebecca Smith there. Some heavy hitting in this seat number two, as we're not even at uh, half distance yet. Still your leader is Jonathan Hadfield, number 142. Dale Seneschal has now dropped down the order slightly. The red top starting to come through from further back on the grid. Next up, it is the main event, the championship of the world. There's 362 under fire, that's uh, Dave Harley. Brisker F2 for many, many years now. Hadfield continues to lead in 142. There's Paul Bailey, 297, under fire from Jess Ward in 86. But I think uh, tonight might be a, a record for the most lady drivers in the same Brisker F2 meeting. Great to see. Paul Bailey under fire now from 224. Two, under our yellow graders, that's Paul Dobson lock up there from one of the red tops ahead of them it's calming down slightly in the closing stages still your leader is John Hadfield, there he goes he's trying to uh, chase him down 27 there Kieran Bradford coming under fire from Tommy Farrell there's the battle uh, behind our leader that's 992 Harley Burns now in second and third behind him is Adam Rubery, number 700 seeing Adam racing in the mini stocks at uh, Hemsford Raceway when he was a lot younger. He's been phenomenally successful in the Rebels formula. Now in the F2, he moves up to second place ahead of Harley Burns there. Can they catch John Hadfield for the victory? They're coming round to start the final lap this time. Can Adam Rebel Rubery catch the 142? He's closing. Get an attack in here on that final turn. He's got to be mindful that Burns is behind him as well. Here we go into turns three and four. Rubery tries, but he's not going to connect. It's going to be a win for John Hadfield, number 142. Good drive there from Hadfield. Second for Rubery. Third is Burns, and we'll confirm the rest of the results in a moment. Heat number two here at Skegness tonight. Next up, it will be the main event, the championship of the world. Well, John Hadfield takes the win then by half a second ahead of Adam Rubery with Harley Burns three tenths further back. It was Kieran Bradford who took fourth ahead of Scotsman Mike Phillip. Tommy Farrell sixth in his battle with Joe Marquand, then Dale Seneschal, Tim Bailey and Dan Scrimger rounding out to the top ten. Heat two winner, one four two, Jonathan Hadfield. And a last bend, you survived, luckily. Yeah, I saw him coming and I knew what his idea was and I thought, I'll just go in slightly deep and just make sure he did miss me. But I thought, if I'm not careful, he'll go come back for the cut back and try to get me to the line. Yeah. And it's, it's always hard on world final nights because the heats are always busy, there's always a lot of top drivers here and a big crowd, you're performing in front of a big crowd but to get a win is nice isn't it? Yeah, I got a world final all night win last time at Buxton and got one this year so I'm very excited with that really. There you go and now you can go and follow it up with a final win. That's my intention and I hope I can do it. Well, best of luck. Thank you. Well now it is time for the biggest race of the year. 2021 Brisker Oak 2 Championship of the World. I was uh, meeting the fans prior to the race and uh, before the race got underway, we caught up with a few of the contenders. 226, Billy Webster. Would you ever have thought a few weeks ago that you were going to be sat here on pole position for a world final? Definitely not, no. It's been a bit of a shock, uh, just sort of revelling in the moment. 
have the nerves started yet? Not just yet. I, I reckon they'll really kick in when I'm the uh, parade lap. And of course, I think even by your own admission, your tarmac form is not as sparkling as your shale form is. You really are a top man on shale, but you're on pole position. When Stewart was in this position in the Formula 1s, he wasn't the fastest guy either, and he won it. No, you never need the fastest guy to win a stock car race, so hopefully I can keep pushing and stay ahead, keep my nose clean. And uh, you're going to take that mirror off, I hope, before the start of the race. You don't want to be looking in that. Uh, no, I'll just keep looking forward. Well, enjoy the race, whatever happens, and congratulations on being on pole. Cheers, thank you. 218, Rob Speak, you've did what you set out to do. You've got yourself on the grid at your own world final. Yeah, that's right. You know, didn't get exactly where I wanted to be, but we had a bit of bad luck in the semi-final, but got through in the consolation semi. And to be honest with you, looking at the grid, looking at the race, if it does what it says it, if it does what it says it does on paper, I think I'm in a good position. Yeah, I think if you'd been on the first three rows, I think Rob of old would have come out and you'd have been, I'm winning this. But now you're at the back, there's a driver near you that may change your outlook. No, I don't think so, because I think he would have only been up near me at the front, so whatever it is, it don't matter, does it? And we know one thing for certain, you are going to make it hard to know where to look on this grid. Yeah, it's stock car racing, isn't it? So you've got to drive like a stock car driver. I think there'll be plenty of bumper from the back, from the front, and I think it'll be a race that you'll not know where to look. And hopefully it'll be a good world final, you know, people will be talking about for years. And I think we do we do have to ask the question, is this Rob Speaks' last F2 World Final? It is my last F2 World Final, yeah. You know, unless I have to go to King's Lynn next year, but I very much doubt it. Well, you've been a great ambassador for Formula 2. You're carrying on being a great ambassador for the sport in general. We wish you the best of luck. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Number seven, Gordon Moody, defending champion. Not quite where you expected to be on the grid. No, we've got a lot of work to do, so we just need to... Hope we get a wee bit of luck and see how it goes. Yeah, well, this has been a Skegness World Final. I think you possibly might have one of the best positions anyway because it's, it's sure to be a bit busy up front. Yeah, it's going to be busy everywhere, so you just uh, take it as it comes and it's your night, it's party time. And, of course, you do have somebody starting fairly close to you up, up front that you've, you've had previous fun with, so I'm sure that's going to make it an interesting race from the back as well. There's quite a few of them I've had previous fun with, so... We'll just uh, we'll take it one corner at a time and hope that we've got four wheels on at the end and have a good race. Yeah, and I think if there's one thing we can be certain of, the trophy that you sat next to now, you will want to take that home with you tonight. Yeah, of course you do, but that's what all these other guys are working hard for and putting, uh, putting their heart and soul into dedicating their lives to being a stock car driver and everybody wants to win that. Well... If it doesn't go your way, we'd like to say thank you for being a good champion for this for this year gone, and I'm sure you'll get it back soon anyway, whatever happens. I hope so. Thank you. Thank you, God. The most famous words in motorsports mean that it is time for the biggest race of the Brisker F2 season. It is world final time and Gordon Moody, the reigning champion who missed the uh, semi-final meeting, so starts at the back, has it all to do to retain the gold that he won at Buxton in 2019. Simply ready for the biggest race of the season. They head off on the parade in pole position. It is 226 Billy Webster, 606 Andrew Palmer starts alongside him. On the second row, 647 Chris Burgoyne and number 38 of Dave Polly. Quickest of the qualifiers for the overseas drivers, former world champion Wim Peters in H124 from the Netherlands. Northern Ireland's 998 Graham Fegan alongside him. And now the drivers pull into a special formation, four wide as a salute to the fans to say thank you for their support difficult times of the last few months. A wonderful gesture by Brisker F2 and its drivers. Certainly an impressive sight, just at the right time as well as the light fades. We're on board with the silver top, Luke Wrench 560. He starts 10th on the grid. Alongside him will be number 13, Andy Ford. We'll throw ahead of them Mickey Brennan, another former world champion, number 968. Alongside him is Rob Mitchell 905. But a wonderful gesture to say thank you to the uh, fans for their support. They head around more abreast around the Skegness Raceway. Any 
one of these drivers could win. There's 35 cars out there. Start to settle back into grid order at the end of this uh, very special salute to the fans. Billy Webster and Andrew Palmer, the winners of the semi-finals at Northampton on the Shale. We'll lead them off. Watch for fireworks from the back. Rob Speak qualified through the consolation semi-final. He's towards the rear of the grid. This will be a 25-lap race. This is going to be an absolute cracker in the Skegness sunset. Now they start to form into line for the two-by-two two start. Webster, Palmer, Chris McGoy. Dave Polly could be a favourite in the 38. Graham Fegan and Wim Peters head up the overseas contingent who set their grid positions on lap times earlier. The fireworks herald the race into life. All the tension reaches its climax here at Skegness Raceway. It's time for the Championship of the World. 35 cars. 25 laps, let's get ready to rumble. Here we go in the world final. Good start by Billy Webster from pole position, coming through on the inside. Chris Burgoyne up into second place ahead of Andrew Palmer. Are oh, they all going to make it round the first turn? Somebody a bit slow away at the back, but I think they've all made it round the first turn. Mickey Brennan were on board with these sideways. He's lost it. Brennan, the former world champion, has gone. A couple more cars go spinning off behind him, on board with Gordon Moody. He clips Martin Ford there, number four, as he spins out, but Moody's got through the middle. A couple of cars off on the outside. I think Jack Aldridge, 921, was involved in that as well. Andrew Palmer delayed slightly in the 606. It's Billy Webster who's held his lead from pole position ahead of Wim Peters, the Dutchman up into second place in H124. Henry King, number 78, I think he must have been delayed. He's a lap down, having rejoined. It's Chris Burgoyne in third place for Scotland in the 647 car. We've lost a couple of runners already. Most of them surviving the first lap carnage. Rhys Cox goes through there in 149. Gordon Moody's already made up a load of places in the early laps from 35th and last on the grids. A couple of cars stuck there on the inside line, Martin Ford and Jack Aldridge. But we didn't see the usual mass pileup that we see at the start of World Finals over the last few years. Billy Webster able to uh, hold his lead, but not for much longer. Oh, brilliant from Chris Burgoyne. He fires uh, Wim Peters and uh, Billy Webster into a back marker there and takes the lead. That was an excellent bit of driving by Chris Burgoyne in 6-4-7, and he leads the World Final. Wim Peters on his tail. And they're starting already to break away. They're into backmarker traffic. Henry King, who was slow away. We've got yellow flags. The yellow is out. We'll uh, wait and see why in a second. Chris Burgoyne has the lead on lap seven of the world final. A couple of cars pulling to the centre, and it's the backmarker that got fired in there. We'll see again this incredible move to take the lead. Watch Burgoyne. He picks up Peters, puts him into Webster. They go into the back of uh, Johan Schouten, the Dutchman. He gets walloped straight in, and Chris Burgoyne goes from third to first in one move. That was a brilliant piece of driving. Now, can he hold it? With Peters, he's a two-time world champion in Brisker F2. Dave Polly up there in third. He's a former national points champion. Also in there, we've got Sir Graham Fegan. We're on board with Luke Wrench in the 560, the silver top. Fegan ahead of us, the Northern Irishman. He's won the European title, among other things, in the past. He dearly wants a world final victory. We're not even close to halfway yet in this championship of the world here at Skegness. Chris Burgoyne leads for Scotland. Here we go, we're back underway. Burgoyne gets his boot down, down the home straight, leads them off. He's won the world final before, that was way back in 2002 on his home track of Cowden Beef. Away they go, bouncing off the wall there, that was uh, Rob Mitchell getting involved with, uh, I think that was Brad McKinstry, the Northern Irishman. There's Gordon Moody, and he was delayed as a result of that in his charge up from the back. Billy Webster battling with... Dave Polly for third place. Behind them is Luke Wrench. He's got ahead of Graham Fegan and Wallop. In goes the bumper. I think that was Fegan getting the bumper in on uh, Wrench. Yes, he's got through ahead of uh, Webster now and he's having a go at Polly. Wallop straight in goes the 38. Graham Fegan, I think he's trying to win this as last car running. He's smashing everybody out of his way. This is brilliant stuff from the Northern Irishman. Here comes Ben Lockwood in the 618 getting into the mix now as well. He's come from uh, quite a way back down the order. 
three wide there ahead of Gordon Moody. He makes up another three place. I think Stevie Burgoyne was uh, one of those in there. Now he's up with the leading pack. Somebody goes spinning out there. I think that was Lockwood in 6-1-8. Graham Fegan now battling with Gordon Moody. Well, Graham Fegan's going to have a go at the uh, world champion now. Jack Cave in 8.01 gets drawn on the inside, but Moody will surely have a go back at uh, Graham Fegan here. Fegan's too busy having to go at Jack Cave. He's going to take himself like Graham Fegan. He's trying to take everybody else out of this race. I think he's smashing everybody out towards the wall. Oh, this is fantastic stuff. Craig Wallace and Rob Speak in this battle as well. Mickey Brennan recovering. He's spun on the opening lap. Has a go at the 890 car there of Paul Rice. Craig Wallace ahead now in number 16, the former British champion, but still your leader at halfway is Chris Burgoyne for Scotland. Burgoyne leads it. Can he take his second world title 19 years after the first one? Wimpater's still in second place for the Netherlands. Burgoyne coming up to lap number 13 of Andy Ford, an earlier shale racer. This is absolutely frantic. Ten laps to go in this world final. Luke Wrench gets the bumper in on Billy Webster, trying to move into the top three. Can he catch our leaders? The 560 car, he'd dearly love to make it silver and gold. Gordon Moody a little further down the order. He's come through very nicely from the back. It may be a too tall an order for him to take another world title from here, though. He's starting to run out of laps now. 3-2-4 of uh, Jordan Thackra battling with Mickey Brennan. He gets uh, some bumper there from the former double world champion in 968. Thackra slowing, looks like he's out of it. Chris Madison, Chris Burgoyne. Needs to keep a cool head now. Needs to be careful with these back markers. Paul Rice ahead of him there. And Harley Thackra as well, Jordan's brother. Wim Peters could be coming in for an attack here as uh, Burgoyne's mired in back marker traffic. This could be crucial. Wimpaters is ready to attack, here he goes into the turn there, he gets the bumper in, oh he's got himself caught up, he goes sideways, and that could be the decisive move, because Peters has dropped back about three car lengths or so from Burgoyne as a result of the loss of momentum there, and that could give Chris Burgoyne the break he needed. Chris Burgoyne a few years ago thought his career could be over due to a back injury, but he came back and on his return won the British Championship at Milton Hall, he's been European champion as well, world title back in 2002 when he was the youngest ever Brisker F2 world champion there is Luke Wrench into the top three now but it is still Chris Burgoyne from Wim Peters I don't think Peters is going to get close enough here for another attack he had his chance when Burgoyne was caught in back marker traffic but he got himself sideways there's a the battle between Gordon Moody and Jack Cave Gets uh, 149 of Reese Cox out of the way there, so Gordon can make more progress up the order. He's going to run out of laps to challenge for another world title. The gold looks like it is going to stay north of the border, though. I don't think Chris Burgoyne is going to be caught now. What a story after he thought a few years ago his career was over. He's won the European title, he's won the British title as well. All his family have raced stock cars in Scotland over the years, and incredibly, 19 years after his first world title on home tarmac at Cowdenbeath, he's back on top of the world. Chris Burgoyne is world champion 2021. Burgoyne takes it, Wim Peters comes over in second. Scotland the Brave here at Skegness Raceway. It's a second world championship, 19 years after the first for Chris Burgoyne. Gordon Moody made it into the top ten from the very back of the grid. Couldn't quite retain his world title, but a great charge through the field nonetheless. But the title stays in Scotland in the hands of Chris Burgoyne. A magnificent drive from the 647, and now he will cut loose in celebration. Donuts from Chris Burgoyne on the start-finish line. Confirm the full result of the world final shortly. Congratulations to 647 Chris Burgoyne. A magnificent uh, world final, not uh, too many major wallops in that one. Graham Fegan seemed determined to smash into everybody he came past, but it is Chris Burgoyne, the Scottish saltire proudly displayed on his crash helmets. A chequered flag in hand. He wins by 1.3 seconds ahead of Wimpaters. Luke Wrench, who took third ahead of the pole sitter Billy Webster. Brad McKinstry, top Northern Irishman home in fifth. 
ahead of Gordon Moody from the very back of the grid, then Jack Cave, Jan Beckers from Belgium, Stevie Burgoyne and Graham Fegan next. 2021 Formula 2 World Final winner, doesn't that sound nice? It does sound nice, 19 years ago it sounded nice, but this 2021 sounds a little better. And you earned it out there as well, it wasn't it wasn't the carnage we expected, but it wasn't an easy race. It, it wasn't an easy race, I got, I got pushed wide on the first couple of laps, uh, and we just hung in there. I worked my way back through the traffic, and then I made the move on, went down the bottom bend when he was with Billy Webb starting, I managed to get up into the lead, and then shortly after that there was a yellow flag, which when was, I think he was a wee bit quicker, but I just used the head and drove sensibly. Then got a good start and he come in with one and it just, after that I got a good gap that I, he just he couldn't close and I was just away. Yeah, he did. He threw it in at you yeah. on this bottom corner. I think he just skimmed you and that got him sideways. I think from that moment on you must have looked in your mirrors and thought, this is mine now. Well, I, I did look at my mirror and thought it was mine, but you, you can never predict it. The end of stock car race, anything could happen. A yellow flag could come out, but we managed to bring it home first, and that's all in ours. And of course, the world the world championship is going back to Scotland. Obviously, not with Gordon, but with yourself. And yeah. it was a very popular win. Yeah, it was good, and it, it felt a lot better the first time when I done it. And it seems more achievable now. I waited that long. <laughs> And now you've just got the nervous moments waiting for scrutineering. Yeah, everything should be okay. We've had it stripped a couple of times this year, so everything will be perfect. Eh? Well, once again, congratulations, 2021 World Champion. Well, a quite superb world final there, I'm sure you'll agree. They tried their hardest, they couldn't stop Chris Burgoyne from taking the world title, keeping it north of the border for another 12 months. Great race action there, and there's more to come after this short break. Don't go away.